I'm at Home Depot. They have plants, proven winners. Wasn't expecting that. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? You're doing well. I'm great. Sorry for the quiet intro. I hate vlogging in public. It makes me feel so awkward. Leaf Joy H2O Ball, Apple Philodendron. This is a pretty dressing. I hope I should have said something other than just species on there. It's just a to cut. Why? Put it in a pot. Come on. All kinds of plants. Fun stuff. Birkin Philodendron, some Rojos. They have these new Tradescantias, feeling flirty, just a mini Nenuk, essentially. Some Edinsonis, various Peperomias, and then this looks like a Ficus, yeah. Ficus seems to step up in another. It's a Louderback Mythic, that's what they're calling this Alocasia. Real cool looking, but those look really neat when they get bigger. I don't know about 30 bucks. Seems steep. Like, really steep. Oh, by the way, these aren't Rojos. These are the Macaulay's Finale. I just saw the, you know, burnt orange foliage and said, oh, Rojo. I stopped in because I need some cactus and such. Oh, there's a whole other display I could have filmed this at. The other one was right there at the entrance. There were people everywhere. <laughs> you could have just come over here. Uh, was I need um, some cactus and some succulents. Hoping they have something to look at here. It's a Prismacolor Philodendron's male eye. It's actually pretty cool. Surprised to see that. Especially at 30 bucks. Nice big Philodendron here. Not Philodendron, Ficus here. Numbolata. Big, beautiful leaves on that one. I am, I'm really liking these Dracenas down here. I don't like that they're just in a bowl. Like, come on. I'd much rather this be potted. So it's just another step for me when I get this home is to have to pot it up, but it's a really pretty Dracaena, specifically the ones that were up front. Actually, there was one that I liked up there more than these. They're just really pretty, nice foliage. Seeing some Scandapsis, a nice big basket. I haven't seen that in a few years. You know, when the plant craze took over, they started to disappear, and you're only able to find them in tiny little containers. Good looking ivy, too. 20 bucks? That's not too bad. Not for ones this big. These are really nice. Really full. Very full, actually. Neon Pothos. Oh, I don't think that's a Pothos. That's one of the philodendrons. Yellow philodendron. Looks a lot like a neon pothos. Very pretty plant. Seeing some Hoyas. Well, oh, a Hoya. There's probably more. Good stuff. I'm surprised. I just got here. Wasn't expecting to see this much in here already. Lots of seeds. So many seeds. And a few cactus and succulents. Have y'all noticed? I'm not seeing the cactus and succulents like I used to. In the wintertime, there would be racks and racks. Shelves upon shelves just full of Echeverias and sedums, but I don't know, not, not seeing it. Just hasn't been something that I've been seeing around this year. Usually in the winter time, they're all over the place. There's a neon. That's a neon pothos. Very pretty. That's a nice looking Birkin. It has a lot of white in it. On this growth, the other growth, not so much, but that one, that's stunning. They don't usually have that much white on them. It's not the ones I'm used to seeing. Usually a lot more yellowish striping. So there's some huge Fetonias. Look how big that thing is. This is a beast. A monster of a Fetonia. I like the Fetonias with the little leaves, but it is cool to see them with the great big ones too. Calicia, Pink Panther. Something else I wasn't expecting to see at the hardware store of all places. Those are fun. They're nice succulents. Sagos, Ponytail Palms, more Dracenas. Well, these Birkins have a good amount of white on them. I guess they just have some nice looking Birkins. All the ones I'm used to seeing just look more like, kind of like this, right here, like that. So this had some good stock they've been pushing out there. Happy to see Aglaonemas. Still don't understand the cost on these. The cost has gone up so much on Aglaonemas. They used to be dirt cheap, 20 bucks. It's in a ceramic pot, cash pot. It's not a selling point for me. I want to pick up my own pots. Especially compared to the Birkins, those are $14.98. Give me 20 bucks for the Aglaonema, which is not anything special. That's a nice Calathea. So there's some larger succulents over here. Still not seeing many of the small ones though. This is a nice Pothos. What is this? Like a Pearls and... No, it's probably a Global Green. Odd, that's not one that I'm usually all that drawn to. I was about to say, I'm surprised with how nice these Calatheas look. I generally, when they have this many, expect to see like 30% of them all crisped up and dry, but these are actually looking pretty good. Not bad at all. Maybe they're fresh off the truck. I don't know. That's another nice looking Skindapsis. Look at that. Is this a ruffle fern? Some sort of Nephrolepes? Yeah. Fluffy ruffle. 
There it is. They're good ferns. Sturdy ish. Rabbit's foot. That's the way to go if you're looking for a sturdy fern to keep in the house. You can't really go wrong with a rabbit's foot fern. Oh, and the big plants. Diefenbachia. More Dracaena. More Dracaena. This is it. No. Yucca. Monsteras. Good sized Monsteras. Decent price. $26.99. I've seen worse. It's a Majesty Palm looking. I'll expect Majesty Palms to look this time of year. Yeah, I guess that's everything. No succulents. It's not the kind I'm looking for. Hey, John Plunkin. There she is. You're such a sweet girl, Plunkin. Yes, you are. Yeah, she said, get away from me, Turbo. <laughs> oh, she let you know. She told you. She said, get out of my face. Good girl, Plunkin. Way to be a good self-advocator. Can I have a kiss? I don't blame her. I don't think I'd like people just shoving their finger right in my face either. He wants outside. So does the tortoise. That's not happening. Excuse you. I don't know what that was about, but go check it out. What was it? Go check it out. Go on. Those are the rules. Figure it out. He has a nervous bark, and that is a trait in dogs that drives me insane. The way I've been handling it, and it's been working fairly well, is instead of correcting him, although sometimes I do bounce back at it because it startles me, but I'm trying really hard not to, is to say, go check it out. I say, you're free. Let's go see what it is so that he can see there's nothing there. And you can get brave and not be such a freaking baby. But yeah, I'm home. If you couldn't tell, your Christmas tree still up. I can't find the box. I need to order a bag to put that thing in. It's the Home Depot and there was some drama in the parking lot. The person parked next to me got rear-ended by a truck that was backing in. So it was just, there was a whole thing going on there. Had to stick around for a bit to uh, talk to the person because the person who backed into him just like left just hit him and ran anyways that's handled got a couple of plants need to go out to the grow space have a few things i need to get done thought i would give a little update on this planter that i spent a good five ten minutes in the last video talking about and i was saying that i should move it back outside and i didn't want daffodils blooming in the house and spent a lot of time talking about daffodils and then realized that for some reason i had mixed up that the tulips are on the outside as you, these are tulips and the daffodils are in the middle I'm fine with the tubes blooming inside. No problems there. Those will be pretty. What I was going back and forth with was whether or not they were going to have enough of a chill, but it's in the 60s outside right now, and it's supposed to be in the 50s and 60s for, like, the next couple of weeks. Half of February is supposed to be absolutely beautiful. I would imagine we're going to fall off, probably, around, like, the 15th to the 20th. Always does. And it'll get cold again for a while, and I'll oh, I'm ready for spring, and... Turn to a big whiny baby about it. But until then, it's not even going to be cold outside. This is in a container. So being in the 50s and 60s with the sun pounding on them, they were going to keep going anyways. So I figured, well, they can just hang out here. This is fine. can hang out and we'll see what happens with those. I brought some terrariums inside from the gross space. These have been sitting on the shelves out there for a while. Uh, you can sit. They need some work. They need some work. I ordered the plants for them. Y'all saw what happened with that. So when I get some new plants, get those fixed up. There's construction going on up there. No, it's feeling nice out, feeling like spring. It's not, but it's nice to have the feeling. Oh, but getting to what actually needs to be done. For this timer here, I need to switch out. It's mostly just, I have a few lights I need to hang. Maybe I'll move a few plants outside for a couple days. Looks like it's supposed to be nice enough. They could probably use a vacation. <sighs> Can you see, you see what the problem is? Look how dark it is out here. I have all these lights up here and they're not working. I'm thinking that this shop light right here, grow light, it's a shop light. This one and that one over there, I think they're just old and they're done. I have a couple more of them right here. Does it say how long these are supposed to last? Because I'm averaging like two years out of each one of these things and they're not that cheap. They're like 40 bucks a pop. So I'm thinking last 45 years? Come, no, no, Honeywell. Y'all a bunch of liars. No way, 45 years. That's a bunch of crap. Same lights I've been using over there on my shelves. You can see them down there. Yeah, no, I've had to change almost every single one of those out. About every two years. So 45, what? It's just a dirty lie. There's no way those things are going to last anybody 45 years. Maybe you might be getting five out of them, which would be great. It would be nice if there were some sort of longevity test to go along with these things because I would pay a little bit more if I had a guarantee they were going to last longer because you can't just change out the bulbs or the strips in these things. That that entire thing is trash now. So is that one. I get, I, maybe I'll take them to an electronics recycler because I have an old TV that I have to take to an electronics recycler. 
So I'll do that, I suppose. The problem is, give those electronic recyclers. If you have a TV you need to get rid of, you're not supposed to throw it away. You're supposed to take it someplace special. I don't know how it is where you live, but here, I'm going to have to pay them to take the TV that they're going to strip for parts and make money off of. Like a good amount of money off of. They're going to profit a lot off of the TV that they're taking. And I don't, if they can take these, that'd be good. Because I just, I don't feel great about these things ending up in landfills. I suppose that these are better than the chemicals you get with fluorescent strips or fluorescent tubes. But you're really not supposed to throw those away either. I don't know what you're supposed to do with those. I haven't used a fluorescent tube in such a long time. That's, I'm deviating. So there could be multiple things going on here. It could be that this is on a bad timer. This fell down on its own, which is really good timing. It's never fallen down before. And then the day before I need to fix it, it came on down here for me. Not that it matters. I have to get on a ladder and go up there and get to fixing it anyways. But maybe this isn't working because not all the lights up here are working. So it's not just those. Some of these aren't working. And these I don't usually have to change out. It's just this cluster right here. I'm okay with that cluster not working because it's now inside of the Eureka Palm. So that would just burn it up and not be great for the plant. So I'll probably just unplug that one, see if I can get it down. And then as far as these strips go, I guess I'll just swap them out. Shouldn't have to do it, but I guess I do. Good thing it's nice enough that I can move some of the plants outside. So here's the croton. I know, it's looking haggard. That's because I have been spraying this thing non-stop. Not non-stop, but it's been getting weekly sprays because it has had a mealybug problem since late fall it's starting to get better but usually it looks better than this because i keep it over underneath the grow lights and everything what i've been using to spray this with is not something i want near the water because the neem wasn't cutting it with the mealy bugs but what i'm using is working but it's something i have to use about once a week it's been over here near the garage door where i don't have to worry about the spray getting everywhere it's the case for everything that's over here these are just things that i have to spray more often with stuff other than soaps and neems with like actual chemicals you didn't need all that backstory the croton's gonna go outside it's supposed to be nice for a few days lows staying in the 40s upper 30s the croton will be totally fine with that the croton's going to go out that'll free up some space i'm gonna have to find some place to scoot the tie because the ladder needs to go here that's the problem with doing ceiling work this time of year it's not ideal because you know there's <laughs> plants everywhere nowhere great to set the ladder to get stuff done i'm just gonna have to do my best i'm gonna have to get the ladder in here and then at some point i'm gonna have to get it over there and i ordered a grow light that i wanted to install basically right where that grow light is but over a couple feet and hang it down lower for the coconut palm that's over there the one i picked out was on amazon and the status on that one is problem occurred i don't know I, what does problem occurred mean i have no idea but that's going to have to wait this will at least be something i think it's mostly going to be beneficial for the plants that are hanging up over here the pothos there's a chlorophytum on the other end that you can't see this dracaena they're not getting much light because this light right here is not doing anything just now realizing these are not the same thing look that's they're different not by much but they're different i guess that's reasonable they might stop selling a product and switch out with another product when a few years have passed an observation since i've gotten up here it's easily eight to ten degrees warmer up here than it is down there i have got to step up my fan game Two big fans over there that are pointed down but i'm thinking i might maybe need to get a couple more small ones to put up here to just have hanging from the ceiling and blow straight down this is an intense difference i also turned off those fans so i could get up here and film so that probably has something to do with it but for plants like this areca palm it's foliage that's all up here having a great winter flame with the ceiling i mean like an 85 degree canopy and then probably 70 degree root ball I doubt it appreciates that. But you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I've been doing things this way for years and haven't had a problem. But now that I know there's a problem, I'll go ahead and try and do something to correct it. As far as the light is concerned, I made sure to go through and check <laughs> the electric. I got this one plugged in, it works. So now I'm just, I'll swap this out and we'll come back. This is not, it's not happening with one hand while I'm on a ladder. Realize before moving on, I should probably make sure that the problem isn't that there's a bad light in the link. This is the one that I just took down. It's linked to 
this light right here. So this light is reliant on the other one to get the power. You can put up to 10 of these together. I don't think that should be a problem, but you never know. The light still works off of the bad light. This is plugged in, but yeah, nothing. All right, well, good to know. I didn't want to go wasting lights hanging up ones in spots where I didn't need to be hanging them up. Go ahead and get this unplugged. The new one hung up. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see. Let's see if this works. I know, great camera work, huh? Yeah. All right, good. Well, I'm up here, may as well take this down, have a look at it and see what's going on with it. Can you peel it out from in there? Come on, there we go. Oh, no, no, not done yet. So I need to make sure this one works. There we go. Oh, that's better. But that's going to make a big difference with how things are growing over here. Light, that's something plants tend to appreciate. It's like a whole new grow space over here. I can't, but it's just two shop lights. Wouldn't think it would make that much of a difference. Although I suppose it probably seems extra bright to me because the other lights have been off since that plug had fallen down. I didn't even need to change that out. I had an extra one ready to go, but it still works. So no reason to change it out. Yeah, I know that bulbs out, but it really serves no purpose. So there's no reason to change that one. This is good. Things are nice and bright again. That was shaky. Sorry about the shaky camera work. I lowered this light down by about a foot, probably. Which I wouldn't think would make that much of a difference, but with lights like these, they really do need to be close to the plants. I feel like that's probably not close enough to the tie to do much of anything. Although the Deliciosas, if they can take a lot of light, but they're also not that demanding. It's really just the smallest bump and improvement might make a big difference for it. I don't know. I think the sea hibiscus is going to appreciate that being lower, though. Really, that light is more just for, I don't want to say aesthetics, because it's not exactly aesthetically pleasing. But it's, so it's not pitch black and dark over there when I'm walking around or going in and out of the garage at night. Stuff like that. Because having all these plants in here, it seems bright, but when you're on the other side of it, on, like over here on the other side of everything. Ends up being very filtered and shaded over there. So it's nice to have that extra brightness over there. It was great. I was walking around over there and I could see what was going on. This is good. Good things happening. Uh, this right here, that's the light fixture I pulled down when I was getting down from the ladder. The bulbs are fine. I went ahead and I tested them out. These are good. It's just this adapter, which uh, I'm probably not supposed to be using these things anyways, but been fine so far. That's great news. I don't need to buy new bulbs, just a new one of those things. And then maybe I'll hang that one up right there. Since that grow light that I said, the Amazon thing said problem occurred, I just got a notification that said refund. So whatever the problem was, it must have been, eh, must have been some drama there. Package got dropped or broken. I don't know. It doesn't matter. These will do just fine in that spot. I just need to get a new one of these adapters and then we have to figure out how to plug it in because the only way to access the power for these lights right here is to get up inside of the storage area. And I have never been able to pull that off while there are plants over here. Usually I have to move everything in the pond and have the ladder partially in the pond and get up there while I'm messing with electrical stuff. Also something I usually do when the pond is drained down. Uh, I'm gonna have to think about that. Maybe I can run it across the ceiling and down over there. Although I'm pretty sure that that outlet, I think that the amps are almost maxed out over there and I don't, you don't want to go over your ampage. So I don't know. That's something I can think about when I get the new adapter. I'll get it figured out. I'm just glad that these bulbs work and that those are up. The plants are going to enjoy it. I'm enjoying it. And I'm surprised. I didn't think that this fixture up here, these five bulbs, can you see them? I'll zoom in those right there. Wouldn't have thought, that was a bad camera angle, wouldn't have thought that that would make a difference for the plants down here, about what, eight feet down from them, floating around in the water. But those lights being off for just a couple of days, the Pharaoh's mass colocasia that was in here with the spasophyllum completely went blech. It's been doing fine the whole time I've had it out here. It hasn't looked great, but considering its conditions, it's been holding up okay, but just two days, that was all it took for that plant to die down. So I would say that even though they're not right next to the bulbs, like they need to be, generally you wanna be within one to four feet, depending on the type of plant light that you're using. Once you go past four feet, you lose a lot of the 
benefits of the grow light. Again, that depends on the grow lights that you're using. I'm not using anything fancy or expensive here, especially with the shop lights. Probably want to stay within a good foot to 18 inches with those. Again, depending on what you're growing and what type of light you're using. But for these, it's mostly beneficial for things like the pothos and that dracaena. It's right underneath there. That one eh, might do something, but overall it's more just so I can see better when I'm over there. And it's nice having the plants lit up so we can all see them better on camera too. This is good. Glad to have this done. Okay, you want to see what I got at Home Depot? Is that? I hope that's not the only reason you're here. If that is, you're probably pretty bored and frustrated by now. Feeling flirty, Tradescantia. It's just a miniature Nanook, which I'm pretty sure I said while I was at the store and looking at it. There are a few different types of these smaller Nanooks, or at least one other that I'm aware of. I've had it in my shopping cart. I don't remember what it was called. I'll put it up here on the screen. It's been in my shopping cart on Etsy for like a week or two, but it was 30 bucks. And I was like, I don't know about that. For $30 for a Tretiscantia, it seems kind of steep. This was 20, which also seems pretty steep, but I was able to see it in person and pick out the one that I wanted, which makes a big difference for me. That $30 is before shipping too. Seems to be a very prolific plant. What I'm mostly curious about, the reason I even wanted some of these was because I want to know what their winter hardiness is going to be like. Tradescantia pilita, which is just your purple heart, Tradescantia, those tend to be pretty cold hardy. They're usually rated for zone 7B, and up. Some sites will say 7, some will say 8, but I'm here in 6B, technically 7A now, but I'm not fully on board with that assessment for where I live. Nanooks have come back for me, and the Palettas almost always come back for me if they're planted in a spot that's near some pavement where the ground warms up very nicely in the springtime and helps keep things from getting too cool during the winter time. They usually come back, so I was just wondering if that's going to be the same thing with this one. Get that in the ground in the springtime and find out. I would also imagine under more intense lighting that there's probably going to be some more pink and hopefully less stretched out growth. While the smaller, daintier leaves are cute, I suppose, I kind of like the big leaves on a regular Tradescantia paleta. I don't like being able to see as much as a stem. That's the thing with the Tradescantias. They can look sickly very easily. If they're not getting the right light, I like them nice and compact and tight. I want those leaves close together. I don't like a lot of spacing in between the leaves, the nodes. I want everything nice and close and together. So fun to see what this one looks like with some more light and once it gets into the ground. I'm thinking that I will probably divide this up because there's a lot going on in that pot, but I'm gonna give it some time, let it adjust to being here. Definitely have some water because it's very dry right now. Okay, and then I got it. It's just a tiny cactus. When I said I wanted some succulents, what I meant was I just wanted one cactus. Just one fat little cactus. That's all I wanted. I don't, I'm not a fan of these things, the yellow stupid flowers they put on top of them. But I'll get that off of there. I have a planter I want to do that it's just going to be one cactus. That's it. Should we do it right now? I have to make sure I have the stuff I need. I got that speaker, the boombox planter that was in my weird planters video. And I just want one cactus in the middle with obnoxiously bright colored gravel around it because it's just screaming 90s to me. And for whatever reason, that's just the aesthetic that I'm seeing with that planter. It's just a fat cactus and some bright gravel. I know, those they don't look good. That's not my fault. I'm talk to Hertz about that. That was all in that Hertz video. Wasn't expecting much out of those. Oh, and then just for jits and shags, I got one of the Dracaenas. I loved the variegation on it so much. It's not a terribly uncommon Dracaena. I've seen these around, potted plenty of times, but this one specifically, I just really like. I looked at all the ones they had and they weren't doing it for me, but this one, there's just something about the variegation on this one specifically that was screaming at me and I wanted it. I have a lot of thoughts and opinions on this, this situation here, whatever we're going to call this. We're calling it Leaf Joy. Water bowl, Dracaena species, easy care, use anywhere indoors. That's a risky thing to say. Keep water at a depth of one inch. Change out water by removing cork if water becomes discolored. That's it. Those are the only instructions that they're given here. There's a good amount of stuff to watch out for if you're hoping to grow a plant just in water. This is hydroponic at this point. I plan on giving this a few days to adjust to being here and then it's going to go in a container with a humidity dome for a few weeks so that it can root itself out and adjust to life as, as it deserves. Not like this, this is dumb. So a nifty rooting vessel, I'll be holding on to that. It's a nifty thing to put plants in to root them, though I usually like to use something dark so I don't have to deal with algae and 
things building up inside the containers, but it's cool. That'll work. Just want to get it into some actual soil because this is not ideal for this plant. They can take it. You can root them like this. But the idea that it's going to end up being a house plant that you'll have for a long time, easy care, low maintenance, uh, I don't know. There are a lot of things that can go wrong down the road. Like I said, you start getting algae on the inside, which isn't always terrible. Maybe even beneficial if it helps darken things out for the roots. But the main thing is that a lot of plants, the majority of them, they don't want light on their roots. It's okay for a little while, but long term, not going to have the healthiest roots that way. Those want to be in some soil. And I know these are a plant that can handle it. The Dracaenas, it's the lucky bamboo, right? It's not bamboo. It's a Dracaena, a different type of Dracaena. Not all Dracaenas are going to be the same, right? Foliage needs to stay dry. The roots, yeah, they can be submerged. It'd be ideal if they had circulating water around them. Water that's the, an appropriate temperature too. Household temperatures, you're not going to get much growth out of these things. If they're between 68 and 72, that tends to be average household temperatures in the U.S. It'll hang around for a long time. You'll be able to keep them for a long time. I just wouldn't expect a whole lot of growing out of them. Some people, that's enough. Sometimes you just want some foliage around. That's cool. If that's you, nothing wrong with that. I enjoy seeing my plants grow, though, so that's why I said I'm going to dome it up and pot it up at some point. For now, this is fine. There's nothing wrong with this for a while. Okay, the cactus. I don't even know. Where did I put that pot? Remember this? Boombox speaker from that video with the antenna that pulls up the antenna that's what did it for me is that you can pull that up and down i don't know why but i really enjoy that about this container i think that this with just the cactus and some obnoxiously bright gravel that should do the trick that's what's speaking to me that plug that thing's really in there okay come on potting up a cactus can't have that in there there we go and i don't have any cactus mix but i do have the aeroid blend here semi-aeroid blend that i think that should be fine. There's enough soil mix in there. So what I'm going to do with that is just add in some gravel, probably more than that. A couple small handfuls, so this is almost going to be 50-50. Want to make sure it drains really, really well because, you know, it's a cactus. Do another one just for good measure. I would rather have to water this more frequently than risk the plant rotting out because there wasn't good enough drainage. The base of this mix is Ocean Forest Potting Mix, which is not something you would normally use for a desert cactus. It's very organically rich. You're doing a pretty good job diluting that down. Maybe one more. One more scoop. I think that should do it. That should be good. I think a cactus will enjoy that. I don't think I'm going to need all that much down in the base of this, am I? So probably just give this a little sprinkle. Just enough to cover up the bottom of that. That should be good. And I suppose the one perk to these stupid ugly flowers being glued to the top of these things that does make it easier to get them in out of the containers. And a little bit deep, you know, dig out a well for that root ball, see if that'll fit in there more easily. That's pretty good. I think I need to lower it down a little bit. See, like that. Yeah, I think that's good, right about there. I'll maybe twist it so you can see the swirl on this a little bit better and it's little fruit that it has sticking out from up there from where it was flowering. I think that looks better. Yeah, that's good. Backfill, which shouldn't take very much soil at all because this is a tiny planter. And lightly tap that down. Doesn't need to go down much. I was actually hoping to find a cactus smaller than this, but no luck. This is the smallest round ball-shaped cactus that I could find at the store. I wanted it to be small enough so I could have it centered with some space in the front and some in the back. Now for the fun part. You think this looks good? Just Hold on for a second. Just wait and see what I'm going to do to this thing. Probably going to ruin it for you. I'm going to be able to fit very much in there, but it doesn't need much. Whoa. That's intense. Okay, you ready? <laughs> there you go. Did I ruin it? I know, for some of y'all, you're probably thinking, Chef, that's too much. Stop it. But look, now the antenna's up. Doesn't that look better? Uh, for me, that just, that's the way it had to be. Needed something bright and obnoxious in there, because this is just screaming 90s at me, and that's what I was thinking of as bright. And obnoxious colors. It's not quite as bright and intense in person. If that makes you feel any better for me, I would be disappointed by that. The brighter, the better. But this is, I think, just it's totally dumb and pointless. I spent six dollars on a bag of aquarium gravel so I could use about two tablespoons of it. I think that was money well spent. I'm going to give that a very gentle watering. Give it probably a week or two. I want to make sure that cactus is fully hydrated. 
And then I'll get that flower off of the top there because I don't like that. I think that flower is stupid. This was one of the ideas I had for this planter. The other idea was to have three really, really small cactus in there, but I think that it just would have ended up looking stupid if I had done that again with the right obnoxious gravel that looks <laughs> so beautiful on my desk. Or a more arboreal looking, arboreal is not the word, a more upright cactus. Some sort of tiny little Apuntia. And they have the little, they call them like fuzzy bunny or bunny rabbit, rabbit Apuntias, prickly pears with the assorted cactus. I think that would have looked really great in here. Probably would last longer in this too. Although these, what is this, a geo whatever mammal area? I can't remember what this type of cactus is off the top of my head. Not the fastest of growers, so I think it could be in there for a pretty long time. But doing something with one of those Apuntias that has the tiny little pads on it, it would eventually get fairly tall. I wouldn't let it get more than probably six inches high in here, and I could have it cleared out around the bottom. And the only reason that would look good is because you'd be able to see more of the gravel. Maybe I just needed an excuse to use obnoxiously bright colored gravel and something. I like it. It's got some flair, some personality. Really, can't go wrong with that. Great combination. <laughs> I've wanted to do this since I got this planter. Almost the very moment from when I unpacked this little planter here, I just had this idea in my head and it wasn't going to go away. I had to get this out of my system. It's out now. I feel better. This is going to be fun to have on my desk up in my office. Pop of color and something completely and totally nonsensical. That was fun. These look nice together. Beautiful pairing of classy plants over here. It's nothing but class dripping in it. I did forget to mention with the grow lights when I was talking about grow lights, I had talked about wanting to move this light down or install another light for the coconut palm. The problem with that is that this light, even though it wouldn't look like it probably is doing much, you think that that plant is probably appreciating having the light up there near the canopy. It does get warm, but that has never been a problem so far. It's more just, you know, light for the big palm tree. So instead of installing another light or moving this one down lower, I think that would be a negative for the Eureka palm, went ahead and I set the coconut palm on top of a crate. So that raised it up about a foot. So now it's a foot closer to the light. The coconut hasn't been acting like it needs more light. I've just been wanting to give it more light. So this is probably the appropriate move anyways. Okay, there's the update. That was fun. This is a whole bunch of nonsense. Hope you enjoyed it. New lights are up. Not much to that. There aren't even real grow lights, but they seem to get the job done. Some fun new plants. Got some obnoxiously bright colored weirdness going on over here. Thanks for hanging out. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. Having fun with your house plants enjoying this nice warm front that's moving through. I know it's not just here in St. Louis. A lot of people are getting a taste of the warm front. There is something interesting going on over here with this croton with freckles, but eh, I think I'll save that for another time. I need to do some reading about it. I may even be able to tell from right here. I don't know. Something interesting happening with the plant. I need to figure out what it is before we talk about it. ADD is on the rampage today. Wrap it up. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.